Twitter at Rob Carson. And I- it's the Rob Carson Show. Are you ready to be pod smacked? Now, here's Rob Carson. All right, we are here, and I believe we are live. <laughs> I apologize to my uh, co-host, at least for the evening, Darla J. Oh, we are live! Look oh, at us, thank look at us, look goodness. Us. Thank God, thank Good God. Good thing, because I would have hated to waste all this makeup. And you look so super, by thank the way. Thank you, you so much. Anyway, uh, glad to have you back on. We did a show uh, last week. It was a lot of fun. Had a had a good uh, a good response. About eight thousand people watched it. Crazy, right? Right. Crazy. So uh, anyway, it's good to have you back on. I know that it, the, the interesting thing was <clears throat> people wanted to hear you. People wanted to see you again because with uh, radio, a lot of the times it, it's the worst thing. Radio's the worst for when it's your last show. Exactly. You just let go. You you know you don't. You don't uh, get to say goodbye. You're just gone. You know, before I came to Kansas City to work at KMBZ, uh-huh. I worked in Huntsville, Alabama. Alabama. Yes. And um, my la- they let me do the last show. And I did get a little emotional. And uh, the my new boss here, his name was Neil Laramore, who hired me, <clears throat> he sent me an email and he said, there's no crying in talk radio. None at all. Really? He was. I think he was joking. Okay, whatever. <laughs> I mean, a little bit of sniffling here and there, but the ugly cry, the sobbing, the hoo hoo that's never good. Yeah, it, 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 the only uh, media that I've ever been involved with, you could be connecting with people on a daily basis for a decade, and then they just let you go like you never existed. That's what happened to you here. That's what happened to me here. I've had it happen before. Happened in Minneapolis. Happened in Cincinnati. Uh, happened in D.C. We've been fired in some of the best places. I swear places. to God. San Francisco, Detroit. I've been everywhere. I swear to God. Anyway, it, the, the positive is that uh, people, um, they are glad to see you back on the radio or at least on the air. And they are, they're glad to see you. So that's cool. Uh, and thank me, you for me, the opportunity. Me, not so much. No, they're like, oh, geez. Wow. I thought you were going. No, <clears throat> but but it, it was it's a, it's inter- it's a very interesting situation. And um uh, what is so? What's going on? Let me just ask you before we get into the day's events, and I want to get into uh, what's going on with the uh, Trump immigration ban, which is, I mean, the end of the earth. If the world's going to explode. If you, if you watched the SAG Awards last night, which I never understood why actors and actresses would want to be part of a group called SAG, um, <laughs> <laughs> Screen Actors Guild. You know, being over forty myself, that isn't a group I no, join. No, no, no. I belong to SAG. Yes, thank See? you very much. Look, uh, you can obviously tell. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> but but uh, but I, I, we're going to get into that very shortly, and the just the caterwauling that is happening, uh, even though Barack Obama did the same thing with the country of Iraq a few years ago, twenty eleven. Thank you. We'll get into that very shortly. So what are you what are you up to right now? You're you're looking for a gig. You're kind of uh, deciding what you want to do. You worked for Joko um, Sheriff's Department. Yes, I did. And that didn't work out. Are they? Whatever reason they let you go. <clears throat> Are you looking at a PR gig? Are you looking at a radio gig? If you, if you could make radio happen on the web, would you consider it or no? You know, if I, I, I would do it uh, probably on a part-time basis. Sure. I, I would like to have a full-time job. Um, somebody has to pay my bills and nobody else is offered. <laughs> and so um, yes. I'm looking for a, a communication specialist job, something that involves PR, social media, um, helping people with their messaging, marketing, all of that. Gotcha. Okay. Well, <clears throat> for me, I'm I'm still trying to decide exactly what I want to do. I'm trying to actually monetize this. Uh, this could be a little bit more difficult to do. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But it, it, I tell you what, radio is hard. It's it's hard to get a job. It's really hard. And I was talking to a friend. You remember? You ever hear of Gabe Hobbs? He used to work for. Clint oh yeah, Town. I know Gabe. Gabe, uh, he has moved out of um, uh, over the air radio and moved into podcasting. He says there are several hundred talk stations in the country with very few jobs and he says but there are 300,000 podcasts Mm -hmm. that's great but you've got to cut through all the the bs right you've got to cut through all the bs and i was doing a little research online the other night and there are several places where you can register your podcast so that more people are able to find you have you done that uh well you know i i've looked at a few uh right now i'm just doing facebook and i'm doing i mean I'm, i'm announcing it on twitter and whatnot um i've got a youtube page so like i said it's all in its infancy right now right and hopefully we'll we'll get this thing going so anyway announce our broadcast on your facebook pages and all that stuff and we're going to get into the the uh the meat of the uh 
of the uh, the show. A couple of local things real quick. Did you know that Amazon is going to have to, if you buy something on Amazon in Missouri, you're going to have to stay, uh, pay uh, sales tax now? No. Did they finally pass they that? Did. They did. They did. Uh, it looks like this year, uh, Missouri is going to be one of at least 10 states to begin paying sales taxes on Amazon purchases for the first time. They'll claim that that's because they want to help the brick and mortar stores because it's not fair that you go into a brick and mortar store and they're having trouble. You go in there, you pay sales taxes on their products. And then if you buy it online, you don't have to. Now, if I live in Missouri and I want to buy something from Amazon, I drive across state line drive. Or you have somebody in, in, uh, in, in Kansas, Kansas order it for me. me. Right. Uh, honestly, it, it, this to me, I, I just, what the hell, uh, what the hell does the state feel that it, it deserves a portion of your purchase? Uh, no matter what it is, uh, uh, you know, obviously we pay taxes for a vi- variety of reasons, but to me, this is just, um, this is bothersome. Uh, this would make me say, screw Missouri. I'll just have somebody in, uh, in Kansas buy it or somewhere else. Um, that's just the way it is. Um, and what, what, what is the reasoning? I mean, the reasoning is no matter what they tell you, the reasoning is because they can make all that extra tax money. Mm-hmm. from people who purchase online. And let's face it, if you look at last Christmas uh, shopping season, mm-hmm. a lot of the stores were hurt because people weren't shopping as much in brick-and-mortar stores. They're actually going online where it's so much easier. Yeah. Well, it, it, I'm going to tell you something, and this is going to be disturbing, whatever, but um, I didn't buy anything at brick-and-mortar stores this year or last year. I know, I know, I suck. I'm terrible. I did not. But go. you know what? It is you're not the only one, though. Yeah. And so, what do we do with? If you look around, all of these new outdoor shopping malls are being built. Yeah. Because the indoor shopping malls are not working anymore, and there are empty ones all over the country. So they're building all these shopping malls, and then they're charging taxes. Now, if I have, if I'm sitting on my couch <clears throat> in my pajamas, and I'm ordering something from Amazon, am I going to get? Take a shower, get dressed, yep. slap some lipstick on, yep. go to the store and buy something and pay a tax there? Or am I going to pay the tax on Amazon? I probably will still pay the tax on Amazon. Yeah, I just, I I, I, um, I, I don't like to go to a mall. I don't like to, uh, as much as I've been up to uh, uh, Lake Forest, or not Lake Forest, but um, uh, Oak, Oak Park. Oak Park. Uh, no, <laughs> I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to be out there. Um, and I'd rather just get it done online. And it sucks. And I shouldn't feel that way. But at the same time, I don't know. It, 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 there's there's got to be a balance here somewhere between brick and mortar and online. I haven't found it yet, but right now it's just easier to go online. I don't know. It is. It is. So, I mean, I, I don't even like to go to the grocery store that much anymore. But we have gotten so lazy as a, as a society yeah, yeah. because of all these these innovations that have happened that make life so much easier for us that we don't actually have to get up and put clothes on, get in the car, and go to the mall to do all of our shopping. See, I'm a geek because I like to go grocery shopping. I'm the person who does all, all the grocery shopping, and I'm a hoarder too. So, like, if I go to Sam's Club and, and or a Walmart and there's their pizzas on sale for half price, I will stock the freezer. I, I'm scary that way. I like that. Buying a pair of shoes, I don't want to go to DSW. I don't want to go to wherever. I just don't like it anymore. I just don't like it. One of the problems, though, is when, when I'm one of those people that when I buy something online, especially if it's clothes or shoes, mm-hmm. and I get it home and it and it doesn't fit or it doesn't look like I wanted it to, yeah. then I go, oh, my God, I have to repack this up. Yeah. Now I have to go to the yeah. post office and mail it. And a lot of times there's some stuff sitting in my garage that I should have mailed in a long time ago. <laughs> I got you. I got you. All right, let's let's move to the to the meat of the story today, and that is Trump's evil immigration ban that is is uh, discriminatory and anti-Muslim. Obviously, right? I mean, of isn't course, that, isn't I mean, that, it's isn't horrible. That he today? hates people. He's a hater. He's a xenophobe. Uh, he's a uh, fascist. He's a he's uh, Hitler. He's Hitler. He is actually Hitler. Hitler. He's yeah. growing a mustache. <clears throat> and last I heard, it's going to be black. Yeah. Yes, it's going to be combed over from the left side of his face, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> going to be right over here. He's going to come over. But no, uh, this is the big deal. He has taken, uh, uh, he has imposed some restrictions from seven countries around the world, which have been identified as states that sponsor terrorism. And uh, people are going batshit crazy over it. Uh, Charles Schumer, did you see Charles Schumer today? Oh. Crying. 
Charles Schumer has never cried in his life. Charles Schumer is an evil. He's just an awful, evil person. I, yeah, but he Chuck was, U. Schumer. Chuck U. Thank you. But he was able to muster some tears, apparently. Uh, I'm not sure if this was yesterday or this morning uh, about this Muslim or whatever ban. Listen to Chuck Schumer. This is just unbelievable. This executive order. God. <laughs> <laughs> was mean spirited oh. and un American. <laughs> oh my goodness. It was implemented in a way that created chaos and confusion what? across the country. And it will only and whose serve fault to is embolden that? and inspire those around the globe who will do us harm. Now, now it, that's it, the <clears throat> argument that drives me nuts. That is, because every time someone says if we're tough on terror, we are going to inspire hatred around the world. And you know what? F them. We haven't been tough on terror. F and look at all the terror that's going on around the world. You know, to say that this is only about Muslims, to say, well, these are mostly Muslim countries, these seven countries. There are 40 majority Muslim countries that are not on this list. And everybody's head's exploding because they didn't include Saudi Arabia. Now, you know, I would have an argument with that. I would say, you know what, if 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 they're creating terror, if they are teaching people Wahhabism, which is probably the most violent form of sure, Islam, sure. then they should be looked at. Oh, well, it's because they, Donald Trump has stuff there. They're, they're, they, they have two exports, oil and terror. That's, That's that, exactly that was evident right. in 2001. That was evident in 2001. Uh, we look at Saudi Arabia like we do as China. We uh, take a pill. And we go, I know they do this, but they're so valuable, whatever. I don't know what that is, what that's all about. Um, as far as uh, Muslim terror, 3,000 terrorist incidents happen in the world every year. Almost every one attributable to the faith of Islam. That's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. And until Islam recognizes it has a freaking problem, then bullcrap, we say, no, you know what? If you if you are a state sponsor of terror, if if the, we are going to, and by the way, this is not a ban. This is extreme vetting. This is looking at individuals. And we've heard all these people, well, you know, a woman was from Kansas City. She's married to a guy from Syria and she can't get into the country. This is extreme vetting. Doesn't mean she can't get in. 90 days. It's not like he shut off the entire country. It's 90 days, 90 days where there, I was, I was driving in and listening to some radio show and they were talking about some guy was on the air and he is marrying a woman who originally is from Iran, but she went to Turkey because she can't fly out of Iran. She's got to fly out of Turkey. Mm -hmm. And now they changed this and she was supposed to come here and they were supposed to get married. That is, I feel bad for him. I feel bad for her. However, it's 90 days. Life's a bitch folks. <laughs> life's a bitch do you know how long it takes for somebody to be a natural life citizen in the united states some team like, sometimes people take a decade yeah exactly all right you know what honestly <laughs> put your big girl panties on folks lighten the hell up and realize we aren't this is this is all being painted as xenophobic as islamophobic and all this crap and there are a lot of organizations or a lot of groups who are already have their protests locked and loaded by the way at kci today did you hear about this at kci they had a protest at KCI. Uh, obviously, it was a uh, an organic protest that came out of... I have no. a friend that went to it. Yeah, yeah, okay, really, okay. Well, yeah. we'll talk about that. Here's, here's a little audio from Channel 41 about the KCI protest. Obviously, it was a uh, it was an organic protest. Of course. That came out of nowhere. It grew out of the sidewalk cracks. <laughs> it was a band meant for him. And people like him. They are standing up for us here. And this is so emotional and overwhelming. That's when several hundred protesters turned out to Kansas City International Airport. It's Isn't it weird that the president can announce a policy? When did he announce it? Was it Friday? Was it was it fr I think it was Friday. And they're able to muster several hundred protesters <laughs> at KCI. And it wasn't just here. It was airports yeah. around the country. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And here, here's my question. Yeah. When I go to the airport, if I go to pick somebody up, if I'm sitting outside at that curb for more than, what, two, three minutes, yeah. I have to drive on, yeah. go around the entire airport. Yes. And in the meantime, they're blocking off the majority of, uh, what was it? It was a C. Okay. Um, 
they're they're blocking all off that uh-huh. and people are trying to get to their flights and if you're anything like me you're racing in there sweating like a pig trying to get <laughs> on the airplane because you're running late yeah and and then they were inside the airport now the people that were outside the airport okay uh they gave them a place to protest i know the guy who set that up he did a really good job they were peaceful but there were some people that went in the airport and if i was there trying to get to my flight and you're in my way and you're blocking the way for me to go check in, Boom. I'm not going to be happy. Yeah. And I saw a couple of people, a uh, couple of young men yeah. doing the chest in the uh, law enforcement officer's chest, yeah. like getting right up into his face. What is, is it his fault? He's just doing his job. I've, I've seen that in, in several protests. So I saw, um, what's his name? Um, Shia LaBeouf do that crap. You touch me, I'm going to beat your ass. And I and I, seri- I seriously hope that law enforcement goes like they did. They there was a protest, I believe it was in Philly. They were blocking traffic, and the the um, uh, police came in. They marched and they knocked the guy on his ass. He was blocking a bus. That's what we need. We need some head cracking. We need some uh, pepper spray. We need some um, uh, tie wraps, and we need to haul these people to jail. Let's this look. is organized. This is an organized. Thing. <laughs> of course, they it didn't. Is. On Friday, nobody nobody woke up and said Friday morning. I'm going to call my friend Joe. It's it's Soros funded bullshit like it happened in D.C. with right. that idiotic women's march, with that idiotic protest on on Inauguration Day. Same group of people. They did it when when uh, when, when uh, uh, Donald Trump was in Kansas City uh, when he was uh, campaigning, did the same thing. This is not organic. And this here's the is thing. organized. Here's the thing. Let's talk about you can argue whether you like Donald Trump or not. Even if you're if you're a person who considers yourself on the right side of mm-hmm. the issue, which, by the way, correct and right. Yes. Um, <laughs> anyway, if he wasn't your candidate, but you voted for him, he said exactly what he was going to do. I would I would I would take people back to when Barack Obama was running for office. He said exactly what he was going to do. He wanted to fundamentally change the United States of America. And he was very successful in doing that. Which means change its foundation. And everything That's, it's about. Thank you. That's what it meant. <laughs> and, it, and, Funda- and he you, did that. You fundamentally change. You want to change at its foundation. And that's what the, the dogs. What? They want to be by me. I can't blame them. All right. We'll let them in. Hold on. Hold on. Let the dogs in. Hold on. All right. So we'll you, what? Um, so you, you, get, uh, you get Donald Trump elected. And the protest started when he was running. The protest started when he won the the primary. The protest continued all the way through. And I I think most of the people that I talk to, one of the reasons why he won is because people are sick and tired of the crap in the streets and the protesting and the marches and the whining and the crying and the screaming oh, yeah. and the gnashing of teeth. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, I I said that uh, from the get go, and and. People are tired of being told that your daughter has to share a bathroom with a man with a penis and a dress. People are tired of uh, campuses getting in your face telling what you can and cannot say. All of these things. This is part of it. This is part of it. Donald Trump is doing what he said. Now, listen to this. 57% today, uh, I saw a poll, and where the hell it was, Bialop or whatever, 57% pro, uh, are, are in favor of the ban from these seven countries. How can you be against trying to protect the United States of America? You know, we can, we'll can. hear one story after another. This poor child, he was vetted at the airport. Okay, everybody loves children. I'm really sorry about that. This woman is trying to get in the country because she's going to marry so-and-so. That is really sad as well. However, what is the main job of the government? And what do they say? To protect the citizens right here. from all enemies, foreign and domestic. Number one, right here. And that's another thing that we have. Uh, when when you talk about the wholesale um, rape of our border, let's just call it that, on the southern border, uh, it has allowed people to come here into the United States to be uh, contained shortly, released wholesale in the country. And it puts you as a citizen in the position of being a second class or second yeah, second class citizen. Um, and, and we have been, as citizens of the United States, we are second to those coming in the country, which is bullcrap. We need to be number one. That is not happening right now. We are the number one priority of the government. We, have be, we are being subjugated. Uh, U.S. citizens born here, 
we should be number one. Absolutely. But we are being subjugated by the government. Then you have other people coming in from other countries who are able to just run roughshod. You can't do this crap in France. You can't do this crap in Mexico for crying out loud. It's it to me is uh, uh, it's it's uh, I'm I support this one hundred percent. I'm just kind of uh, tired of being bitch slapped by the third world. <laughs> you know. Well, I don't. And, and here here's my thought is that um, I'm sorry. I don't want us to become a third world country. We are the greatest country on the face of the earth, and you can disagree with that all you want, but we have the most opportunity. We have uh, a great populace. We have people who who are entrepreneurial. We have the greatest country in the world. Why does everybody want to change that? That's what I don't get. Well, I've said this from the get-go. When you look at, and by the way, hello, Chetta. Chetta and hey, Chetta. Co- Colleen. Hello. And, and Teresa. Glad to have you and Wanda and Trudy. Share this with all your friends so everybody watches. Please do, please do, because, uh, you know, it's kind of cool to uh, to hear people who are otherwise shuttered by the broadcast industry to be able to broadcast again. Kind of cool. So greatly appreciate you watching, and please share right now with your friends that we are on the radio right now. Uh, and we're doing look, on the radio, on the air. That's right. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Let's play a little more for this uh, this uh, the protest at KCI. This Absurd on the face of it that this thing, you'd have several hundred protesters for an announcement on Friday at KCI. This is so not grassroots. We cannot discriminate oh. people based on a race, based on gender, based on nationality. Hey, wait, hey. wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait. Ho. I know. Gender? Gender? Are we keeping people out because of their gender? <laughs> This is so stupid. It's so obvious. This is AstroTurf. This is its race, gender. These. This is a calling card they've been doing for years. Exactly. Oh, my God. A little bit more for this guy. Based on religion. And that's not what America is for. This demonstration in Kansas City is part of a larger event taking place across the country. This Which is being organized by Soros-funded groups. Began as protesters join at airports coast to coast to express their dissatisfaction with President Trump's immigration. How did that happen, Darla? How did they organize in airports <clears throat> coast to coast? Well, look, I mean, social media, <laughs> you can certainly get a message out very, very quickly. Sure. And if the, the thing that always amazes me at some of these protests is all the people holding up professional signs yeah, oh, that yeah. are all the same. Oh, yeah. And where did you get that? Well, I don't know. I Somebody gave it to me. Well, how did yeah. those signs happen to be made for Sunday? I know. Well, I don't know. Somebody must have paid for that and gone to some printer <laughs> and had. So these professional signs, they all have the same T-shirt on. Maybe like the uh, people who are fighting for the $15 an hour. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's <clears throat> that's a new one. And remember when it was 10-10? Last year it was 10-10. Yes. Now it's 15. You know why it's 15? Because 10-10. Inflation? No, no, no. 10-10 can't pay union dues, girl. Oh, that's what it's course. all about. Of course. 15, you can afford to pay SEIU. That's right. what it's all about. <laughs> that's what it's all about. So how long is, has Donald Trump been in office? Uh, wow, I think about 10 days. Maybe? Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. OK, <laughs> so look at what has happened in 10 days. And you know what else happened today? And I don't know if you heard about what? this. What? President Obama broke his oh, silence. Yes. He broke his silence after only 10 days. Really unclassy. You know, I, I look at, I don't care what you thought about George W. Bush, but that man is a class act. He yeah. walked out of that White House, he shut his mouth, he went to Texas, and he did what he was going to do with the rest of his life. Yeah. Ten days. He could not keep his mouth shut for more than ten days. You knew that was going to happen. <laughs> I mean, you knew that was going to happen. Well, he's still going to live in Washington, D.C. So it's, what's he going to do, run out in the street and start, uh, he'll probably be leading the protests. It's, uh, uh, he's not a classy person. Uh, he should shut his mouth. Hello, Avery. How are you? What do you want? It's my daughter, Avery, everybody. You're a radio star. What? Oh, okay. Avery lost a molar today. It's kind of a It big was deal. in a bag. Where was it? it was Your right mom here. took it. I gave it to you. Yeah. Yeah, How you doing? Yeah, it's in a bag. Why don't you bring in the box of wine, God? <laughs> <laughs> Avery. <laughs> so we are getting, somebody noticed earlier, by the way, we do have some wine. Yes, yes, yes. We have the you know the delicious uh, box of Franzia going here. Yes, box wine. We have some delicious uh, uh, cheese over here as well. So I wanted to kind of uh, in- enjoy, which is the worst thing we could have as uh, radio personalities to eat cheese. Um, but yeah, this this president, I mean, 
shut the hell up and leave. Go fade into the rearview mirror of history. Go away. For him to be involved, this just reinforces this whole mantra that he is an agitator. He is a community organizer. That's what it's all about. Shameful. Shameful. Did you hear, by the way, Hillary Clinton, <laughs> God in heaven, she's talking about already a run in 2020, which, oh, please. Dear Lord, <laughs> go what, what, away. She, she's, And what they want to do is they want to get her on a, uh, a television show. They want to, will you go away? Somebody take the dogs out. They're all right. Um, but uh, they want to do some sort of a show a la Ellen with Hillary. Oh, because she's so soften, entertaining and so to loving. Soften, to soften her image. For a run. Now, to me, I'm not a lib. I'm not a Hillary supporter. Uh, I, I thought you had to be likable or entertaining or communicative or connective in some way, shape, or form to be a talk show host. But somebody's floating the idea of her. Can you imagine anybody worse as a host? You know, here's the thing. She had eight years to prepare herself for this run. Yep. All of the things that people said eight years ago. You're unapproachable. You're not likable. Yeah. You um you you can't. You're you're disingenuous on just about everything. Yeah. You don't know how to show emotion. You don't know how to pull people in to and and make them want to be part of what you're doing. Yeah. And if she could have done that in eight years, is she going to be better by 2020? She says she wants to. Uh, there's a possibility of running for mayor. At this point, I mean, dear God, just retire. Go the f away so done so done she's done goodbye let her go um i don't understand i don't understand the need uh she's got enough money she's got two billion dollars that they got with the clinton foundation which shut down by the way immediately mm -hmm. ironic which, isn't I mean, it i'm at all those kids who were being helped oh my god i know those poor children yeah uh what about and, the children and this is all about her being back in the limelight again her uh you look at this <laughs> all of these countries dropped out of supporting is that you nope okay all of these countries that were supporting the clinton foundation dropped out immediately after she lost which is it's fairly obvious i don't know who that i is. don't know who is, is me? i swear it's not me it's not, oh it's in my pants <laughs> <laughs> the hell is calling i'm sorry me? your pocket's ringing 301 i don't have no idea who this is somebody from maryland anyway <laughs> But uh, but it is amazing how quickly those countries that were so concerned about the Clinton Foundation and what they were doing for the betterment of mankind, when she didn't get elected, boom, it was closed. Boom. Unbelievable. <laughs> Just a unbelievable. You know, and, and if you think about it, people are, are, their heads are exploding about Donald Trump and what he's doing. And the fact that she was selling this country down the river oh. when she was working as Secretary of State and doing pay for play with Saudi Arabia and several of these countries that everybody's like, oh, oh, that's terrible. You won't let any refugees in from uh, Iraq or it's terrible. You won't let anybody in from Iran. Oh, let's let a bunch of people in from Iran. That's a fabulous idea. <laughs> Unbelievable. It is. Uh, I just wish they would fade into oblivion. I cut my teeth writing comedy for Rush Limbaugh when the Clintons were in office. I'm more than willing to let them fade into oblivion. Uh, even though they provided much fodder for me when I was writing for Limbaugh in the early 90s. And I, ha Goodbye. I have to say, um, Bill Clinton, I mean, you, you can't help but like Bill Clinton. <laughs> Although he's kind of a sad shell of his former self, isn't yeah. he? Oh, he yeah. I think that oh, happened yeah. after he became a vegetarian. It sucked all the meat and juice out of him. He's kind of like an old man now. He was a vegetarian before that. Um, <laughs> my, my, It was really funny when, when he did the, the whole, you know, he was banging Monica Lewinsky in the White House. It was very erotic to some people. Some women really dug it. My wife kind of was, kind of dug it. Well, it's the power thing. Yes. My mother, one of her friends, uh, went to some <laughs> golf outing yeah. in Virginia, I think, it, okay. years ago. And I think he was, was he still president? I think he was. I'm not sure. And she said, and this woman was a Republican, and she said, I understand why women drop their pants for him. And my mom said, why? <laughs> and she said, because... He looks at you and talks to you as if you're the only person in the entire room. Really? He makes you feel very, very special all by yourself. Wow. And she said, she said, if he would have said, you want to go upstairs, she would have gone. Wow. I know. Wow. I know.
Uh, Jimmy is watching. Greg is watching. Teresa is watching. Hello. Hello. Uh, glad to guys have you guys here. It's a, it's a treat. The last time that you were on, Darla, we had about 8,000 folks all together uh, view the uh, the broadcast. If you have any questions uh, other than just saying hi, please write us. Um, again, it is Rob Carson's show, obviously. You're watching uh, our Facebook page. Um, now this is kind of cool. Donald Trump has signed an executive order today that it, this is what he said he was going to do. He has said that for every new regulation uh, of any agency, there have to be two that are gotten rid of. That's gigantic. That's huge. Uh, that that almost almost unfathomable. I think that in the last couple of days of the Obama presidency, if I remember correctly, there were at least 2,500 new regulations a day oh, yeah. for the last month. Oh, yeah. So there's tons of new stuff out there that really doesn't need to be there. It is clear. And I, I don't understand the reason for this magnitude of regulation other than just to shut down the system. I, I, I honestly, I don't understand it. I don't understand why it's we need... It's because, Rob, don't you know... What? That you and I are not equipped as human beings <laughs> to actually run our own lives. We need yes. the government telling us yes. how to do it, when to do it, why to do it, and why not to do it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, obviously, we're just not capable of making those decisions on our own. Somebody who is so much smarter than us that works for the government is the one that should tell us how to do everything. This is the result of what I call faculty lounge mental masturbation. Uh, they sit around, they don't, they, they meet and they meet and they meet and they have meetings and then they, then they uh, decide somehow that they need to add all these regulations. Donald Trump, I don't know, have you been, you're a professional, I'm a professional. Uh, Donald Trump is, uh, he breathes rare air with regard to excellence okay he is like uh, tony robbins on steroids he he if you know excellent people people in business who go in every day and they and they get up in the morning and they go this is here 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 we have to be excellent this is unprecedented in government okay if you looked at if you ever look at the uh, the presidential calendar when barack obama was was president it was generally wake up 10 30 meeting and then a meeting in the afternoon. Donald and Trump's then golf. day. Yeah, Donald Trump his day is completely populated with this. This. This is. This is what I said. People in government, are, their heads are exploding because they're not used to that. Who's calling you? No, he's, all these people are following me. <laughs> good. 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 Are they outside? Yeah, they're following me. They're waiting for me in my car. <laughs> is she done yet? Yes. I can see her through the curtain. We're following her. But that's the. This is a. This is the difference between uh, academia and excellence. And people are freaking out because you're used to waiting for years for shit to happen. Donald Trump's making it happen in days. You know, I thought it was kind of funny. I, I don't remember exactly what day last week, but but there was a, a story that came out that said, uh, I think it was the EPA that twenty five percent of the people that work at the EPA are are just going to quit. And I was like, yes, yes, he's making America great again. Yes. Look at how much money that would save. Well, also, I had heard uh, 25% or 30% of uh, federal government employees were going to quit if he became the president. All right, Fantastic. That, I, I was like, hell yes. Uh, that, of course, was a load of bull crap. Right. It, it wasn't going to happen. Um, I had also heard that within two years, 30% of the federal government workforce will be eligible for, un or for uh, a retirement. Amen. Let them go. Let them go. And when they go... Don't replace them <laughs> because honestly, we are, we are top heavy as far as government is concerned. I don't give a crap what you say. It is nearly impossible to get rid of federal government employees if they're at the VA, they're, they're wherever they're nearly impossible to get rid of you and I, however, in the private sector, boom, you could be gone tomorrow. Exactly. No big deal. No big deal. Federal government, you, you can appeal and appeal and appeal and do all this stuff. And it doesn't it doesn't happen. So I'm I'm all down with let's stop the hiring, let them retire and and have the federal government live like we have for the last eight years, which is have cuts in our lives. And and no increases. I mean, I, it was it was years before I got a raise. 
Oh, yeah. When I when I was still working in radio. Me too. And and so <laughs> and, and now it could be years Boy, years yeah. more, unfortunately. And that's the reason why we're drinking wine. Um, yes. But there, you can't tell me that the government isn't top heavy. You can't tell me that there hasn't been a huge increase in the amount of people that are working for the federal government. And if you work for the federal government, I don't dislike you no. at all, at all. But if you're living in that rarefied air, so to speak, then you don't really know what's going on in 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 the real world, so to speak. How is that uh, retirement plan? from uh, intercom working for you that retirement plan yeah, how is that retirement plan because i mean when you're in government i mean you get a hell of a retirement plan i'm sure oh yeah in, in radio you got a hell of a retirement plan right yeah <laughs> i'm trying to think my retirement plan i think i got my headphones the stuff that was in my desk <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you know what people would say to us uh, they'd say that was your choice and you're right that was our choice <sighs> Yeah. Our choice. And yeah. once, you know, if you love something and yeah. you're passionate about something and, and it makes you happy, how many people can say they love going to work every day? Yeah. Yeah. And if you love going to work every day, yeah. it's really hard to give that up. I understand that. But at the same time, there are ways business can treat you <laughs> that are positive. Right. And there are ways that some businesses, including a lot of the major radio companies, they bitch slap you. <laughs> They're not good. Right. Not good. Uh, that aside, that aside, um, we are doing something I think that is very I interesting, very new. Um, I decided to kind of start this up about a month or so ago. If you get a chance to um, uh, become a patron of my show, patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com, Rob Carson Show, for a dollar a month or $2 a month or $10 a month, you can be uh, a sponsor. Keeps the lights on. Keeps the lights on. Also, you have an email address that you promoted the last time you were in here, jdarla at gmail.com. Right. It's J-A-Y-E Darla at okay. gmail.com. And you're still kind of looking for a gig. You were uh, interviewing kind of. folks <laughs> desperately. Please, God, in heaven, help us, please. But uh, if you get a chance to check out patreon.com, Rob Carson Show, um, it's an interesting thing, Darla, and, and uh, I had you on. Um, when I left, I, I've been, you know, terrestrial radio is tough. It is. Uh, and like I said, I was told, uh, talking with Gabe Hobbs and he said that, um, there are hundreds of talk stations around the country. There are 300,000 podcasts. It's a matter of, uh, creating an audience. And um, how do you break through? I don't know. You know, and, and we're working on that right now. Right. I'm working on that right now. Having you here, I think helps because I think a lot of people, uh, as I had mentioned earlier, really um, uh, wanted to hear you again, which is kind of cool. What sort of response, since I had you on last week, what sort of response have you gotten from people who listened to you from friends and whatnot? Were they a little surprised by it or what? Um, I think that uh, a lot of people said it was really good to hear me again and that it sounded like I was having so much fun with you and that you and I um, actually had pretty great chemistry for not knowing each other. Um and <clears throat> wondered if I would do it again. Yeah. Would I do it again? Um, if somebody offered me a radio job right now, yeah. I, I don't know. I uh, know. I know. I don't know. Because I actually really, really liked my job at the Johnson County Sheriff's Office. I liked it because it was what radio was to me in the beginning. It was something brand new. I learned something new every day. Yeah. It was never boring. It wasn't always exciting, but it was something that I was creating on my own, and I worked toward it every single day. Not saying I wasn't doing that in radio, but I liked it because it was so it was all brand new, and I was going to rise and fall on my own abilities. Sure. Well, that's how it should be, but instead, I I did really well, and then there was a change in administration, and then I was gone. Yeah. And it kind of I I had said to myself, you know, you really ought to get out of radio because if you get into something else, it's going to be so much more stable. <laughs> who knew who knew for me if i could make a go of this if i could make a go of this and i and i hope and pray to i will not go to terrestrial radio again i won't um i've worked for several companies i've had many promises made and i've had many promises broken um i've been ostracized by some people who are uh, in the business now for some uh, inane. I don't mind doing like part-time on-air 
uh, at radio stations, but also doing this. I think it would be a nice combination. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens. There's a lot of freedom afforded with um, a, a, a uh, an online radio thing. I can say shit, for instance. And do you feel better because you can say that? <clears throat> actually, it felt kind of good, actually. Did it? Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All those years trying not to say that? <laughs> I know. Isn't that weird? Because I know, that it, and it's funny because I know that you, when you were on the show um, a week ago, I would use a little profanity, and you are still in that mode I can't say that. <laughs> well, and, and, saying, and I'm not saying you have to. I'm not saying you have to. I don't go crazy on the profanity thing. I don't. I don't. And it's not any any sort of freedom or whatever. It's just kind of funny that I can just say it, and I don't. I don't know. It doesn't matter. And you don't have to look around for the dump button like these radio stations. <laughs> I know. You know, I, know. I, know. I made it through twenty some years in radio yeah. without ever swearing mm -hmm. um, until. I was driving to work in a blizzard. And this was a couple of years ago. Yeah. And I think it was about five years ago. Yeah. And I, it, it was, I couldn't see. I was coming in for the after, for the evening show. Yeah. I was talking to the guys on the afternoon show and the snow was coming down so hard you could barely see. And so we were inching behind each other all in this tiny little lane. Gotcha, gotcha. And some big four wheel drive, of course, they think they can do anything, comes flying by me and almost ripped the mirror off my car. And I said, oh my God, oh shit. <laughs> and 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 they gave me crap for the next couple of years because I thought I was going to end up in a ditch, and that is the only time I've ever sworn. That's funny. That's funny. Well, I I, I it's interesting because when you're on the radio, uh, it's like um, uh, people who stutter when they sing, they don't stutter when they sing. Right on radio, you don't think about profanity. You don't no. you know, consider it. I never did. Never. Thirty years. Thirty years on the radio never never did a profanity you just shut it off you just shut it off. it's kind of for the people that used to say to me well i don't know if i can do it without swearing well i mean <laughs> if your brain is not working while your mouth is engaging yeah. then you probably can't <laughs> but it's not that hard to because i used to always think that people that swore a lot sh were showing their ignorance because if you actually, can't express it's, yourself it's, without swearing that actually shows you're smarter if you swear i saw a well study. shit i know thank you <laughs> You're a genius. Sounds oh so my smart. God. Oh. But no, I saw I saw a study last week that said if you use salty language, you're smarter. Really? And I, I looked at it, I went, fuck yeah. <laughs> she looks at me like, you uh, didn't uh. say that. You didn't say that. But no, no, they said that you if you use salty language, you're smarter. I don't know. I don't know why. But here's the funny thing, Darla. Off the air, people in radio, we have the worst The worst language, language ever. Ever. It's right. so stupid, right? Right. It's so funny. It's because sometimes, funny. And, and, you know, I, I try not to swear, but sometimes you, there is no other word that will do. The F word is a brilliant word when used properly. Exactly. If it's just used, it was so funny, a few years ago. Um, and by the way, thank you for Barry, Barry for uh, joining us. Hi, Barry. 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 Glad to have you on, brother. Um, I put together a piece of Ikea furniture. It was a... Uh, Oh. Allen wrench. Yeah. Oh, 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 and it was a uh, it was a, a pantry, and literally three hundred screws. I swear to God, and I told Kel that I would not swear during the making of this furniture, and I made it all the way to the end. Did I tell you the story? No, time? all the way to the end. The last screw fell out of my hand and went down the furnace vent, and I let out every curse word that I'd held out for the last five hours while I was putting this thing together. <laughs> but but we can turn it on and we can turn it off. We can turn it on or turn it off. With this kind of radio, we don't have to worry about turning it off. So whatever, you know. And listen, I, you know, I, like I said, I don't use profanity for profanity's sake. It just happens. It's organic. It's organic. So are you going to start calling me a bitch or something? Because so far, I think I've been pretty nice. Um, no, only to other people. <laughs> <laughs> She's a bitch. But Darla, you're really a nice person. <laughs> No, no, no. Uh, let's talk about a couple other things here. I thought that were kind of interesting. Did you hear that there's a dating site for Trump fans? Now you're single. Yes. Are you uh, Are you looking? Um, yes. Are My you? mother said to me, hey, you know, if you get a job, we started learning about someplace I was trying to get a job. And she said, <laughs> well, just think you can meet a man there. And I go, mom, I want the job first. She used to say that to me every day while mother. I was at the sheriff's office. Haven't you found a nice deputy or, or a captain or a major or something? No. 
So there's there's a dating this site is, for Trump people. Is, there are there's a dating site for Trump people. I fortunately have not had to date in a very long time. You're a very lucky man. What about Tinder? Are you uh, doing that? No. Or, hmm. Tinder is just a way to hook up and bang somebody, right? I, I think so. That's what it is. Uh, that's you, what I've heard. Where do you meet people? I mean, where do you? Well, I'm, see, I'm and, curious, and, and I'm, I'm not. I'm not a person that likes to go out to bars a lot. Okay. Okay. So when you when you get old when you get older, yeah. it's harder. I think. Yeah. Oh yeah. Of course. And and I think that a lot of people. My brother just met a wonderful woman in Houston, Texas, um, on Match.com, and it's working out really well. But he had dated a bunch of psychos before it got to that point. But you, as a woman, and I've said this for years. You have a thing called the schmuck factor, and that is that there are more miserable, wretched, awful men that you have to weed through right. to get to somebody. When I was dating, I had, a, 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 I mean, it was literally a garden of women who were great. I broke so many hearts. I was such a douche. Uh, I really was a douche. Dear God in heaven, thank God my wife is with me. Um, but, but for women, and particularly when you are, over the age of 25, which you just last year, right? I just, just turned uh, 26, right? Uh, it, it gets it gets a lot worse, right? I, I, Don't I you was, have like these kind of walking wounded people that you're oh my gosh. dating? I can't even oh, my imagine. gosh. Well, you know what? You don't get to a point in your life without having some kind of crap happen yeah. to you. I was When you were talking about that, I was just thinking about a date I went on when I was living in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, I went out. I started... Remember when AOL first came out and they yeah. had love at AOL. And so my partner, I was doing a morning show on okay. a rock station, okay. convinced me to put um, a profile up there and not use my radio name. Okay. And so I did. Right. And I, he said, okay, then you go out with these people and the next day you can come tell us what it was like. <laughs> so one in particular that I remember, I'll never forget. I went and I met him at a, at a bar where a friend of mine was a bartender because I figured I'd be safer then. Okay. Gotcha. So we ordered nachos and he was kind of weird, but I thought, okay, you know, I was just getting to know each other and he probably thought I was weird too, sure. but he actually took a giant scoop of guacamole, put it in his mouth, and then he, I'm not making this up, he spat it out in his hand and then he reached across the table under my nose and said, this tastes funny. Does it smell funny to you? I almost threw up and I was like, Really? Dear God. And I, I threw some money down on the table, and I, I'm i not kidding you. There were many, many dates like that. And so if I've kind of backed off on trying to find Mr. Wonderful, that might be why. Oh, I, I honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. Um, I'm blessed. Your wife is lovely. She's spectacular. I'm, I'm, I'm oh. you trade it up. I mean, not that you're not spectacular. No, I mean, no, you no. are a fine I, yes, hunk of right. male meat. Have some more drink, yeah. <laughs> more, more booze. You'll, yeah, okay, whatever. All right, let's move on to some other stuff. I think it's kind of interesting. Um, and I think you're 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 interesting, um, Darla, because I'm getting to know you, and uh, you were my competition at one point. Uh, what would you consider yourself as far as um, politically uh, being? I always say that I'm a libertarian-leaning conservative. What would you consider yourself? I would say that I am uh, conservative. Um, I I used to say I was a conservative Republican. Now yeah. I just say I'm a conservative. Okay. Well, th the reason why a lot of people don't realize when it comes to Republicanism versus Democrat, it's a strong central government versus states' rights. That's what being a Republican is all about. Right. So I am more Republican in that fashion. People somehow um, feel that uh, Republican means conservative, Democrat means liberal. That's not the case. Yeah, Donald or, or, or uh, uh, JFK was a conservative Democrat. Yes, he was, he was. He was about a strong central government, but he was a conservative. Right. Uh, you've got people like Lindsey Graham who are fairly liberal, but are why? Why is Republican? He... Stupid. You know what? I'm sorry, and I hate to stop you, but I have to yeah, say this. Go ahead, go ahead. John McCain, bless his heart. Yeah. He did a wonderful thing. We owe him a debt of gratitude yeah. for what he went through for this country. He and Lindsey Graham, I am so sick of them. And CNN and MSNBC, they rush in to get them on for absolutely everything. Yeah. Lindsey Graham, why was he even running for office? He had two people that were following him. One was his mother, and I think she died. So there was <laughs> one person. Yeah. And every everything that... Donald Trump is going to say they're going to rush to television and and yeah. be all mavericky, you know, John um, yeah. Yeah. John McCain, he's a maverick and and oppose it. 
what is the point of those two? Well, the they are exactly why Donald Trump was elected. Uh, this election, and I said this three years ago, is about um, rejecting those who go to Washington, D.C. and spend their lives telling us how to live ours. That's what it is. McCain is part of that. Lindsey Graham is part of that. They are able to survive in their states because they have a, uh, a power structure. They have a, uh, an infrastructure that is uh, capable of getting them elected again and again and again and again. But we as a country, particularly conservatives, rejected that, rejected that. It's just a matter of time before they are gone. Well, I think that, the, in, in my opinion, the Republicans that have been in office for a long time, are almost as bad as the Democrats. Mm -hmm. And the reason being is that they come home, they run for office, they tell everybody what what we all want to hear, and they go back and they promptly forget all of that. And all of the things that people have been saying since probably 2010 that they wanted the Republican Party to do, they have done exactly the opposite or done absolutely nothing. And so I, I that's a, a big reason why Donald Trump won. And I don't think he was elected by just Republicans or conservatives. I think Democrats voted for him. So Obviously, too. union members voted for him. So I think too. a lot of people voted for him. I think him. so, too. Back to the subject of being single. This is curious. Yes. Because I haven't been single. How long have you been single? Uh, my whole damn life. Um, <laughs> I, actually, I almost got married when I was 40. Really? Yes. My college sweetheart. Wait, wait, wait. When, when did you turn 30 or 40? That didn't That happen. was like last year. Okay. And uh, yes. after I turned 26. <laughs> and my college sweetheart came back into my life out of nowhere. Really? Yes. And I was unemployed, ironically, oh, wow. uh, in Cleveland, Ohio. Vulnerable. And <laughs> Vulnerable. And I kept getting this number on my phone. Yeah. And I never answered it because I'm like, Redfield Company, what's that? <laughs> And so finally I looked it up. It was Omaha, Nebraska. I'm like, I don't know anybody there. Okay. But my curiosity got the best of me. And he and I were sweethearts in college. And we drifted apart because he lived in Des Moines. I lived in Minneapolis. Gotcha. And we ended up um, getting together. Uh-huh. And I met him down in Miami. He was going to a convention. He flew me down. There was like I'd seen him the day before. And it had been years. Mm-hmm. And we immediately, it was like, like I just seen him last weekend. Really? Fell madly in love again. Really? And he helped me through being unemployed. He went back to Omaha. He called me every day. How's it going? Go down and work out. You know, I don't, because it's hard being unemployed and being by yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so this, this ends up being a very sad story, but I'll try <laughs> okay. to get to it quickly. All right. Okay. Great. Okay. So he would make me laugh every day. And, um, he, something was wrong with his voice okay. and it wasn't like he was running out of air, but he was running out of energy and he, uh, he would be speaking and it would kind of go like this at the end. What? Yeah. And I said, something's wrong with your voice. You need to go get that checked out. So go to an allergist. So he did. And she tried a bunch of stuff. And then she said, I don't think it's allergies. You need to go see a neurologist. What? So he went to a neurologist. And the neurologist said, they did a bunch of tests. And they said, I think it's one of three things. Oh, boy. It's either Parkinson's. It is myasthenia gravis. Or it's Lou Gehrig's disease. Oh, dear God in heaven. And it was Lou Gehrig's whoa, disease. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did this guy work in radio in Omaha? No. Okay. Because I knew a guy who had Lou Gehrig's in Omaha. Really? He had Lou Gehrig's. Dear so, God. I said. Look what you did to that man. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Sorry. Actually, I, I gave him a little bit of joy before the end. Um, that sucks. It sucks. He And there's three oh, kinds. Honey. There's There's arm, there's limb, and there's bulbar. And bulbar is when it starts in your throat. And. If it, oh, what happens Jesus. is you cough, your muscles die. You cough, your muscles die. You eventually, essentially drown. Okay. Oh. I was supposed to go see him the weekend after 9-11. And I was going to fly to Des Moines. And 9-11 happened. I was working in Detroit. Yeah. And um, that was a horrible day. Oh, and Lord that God. night at 10 o'clock, I got a call from his friend. He had laid down that day and he died. Are you kidding me? And I was... Um, devastated and i was i i said to myself why would you put to god why would you put him in front of me and then take him away and so because of that experience i kind of said you know what i'm not getting close to anybody and all this time has gone by which is ridiculous (laughs) can i bring some light into this tammy says you guys are great together thank you tammy (laughs) (laughs) sorry about the guy you killed i just just threw that in there i just threw that every Avery, can you bring some wine in here? We need a little more wine. 
I brought this up, even though, God, you killed somebody. I'm so- <laughs> After yourself. <laughs> but no, self-marriage is a small but, but, but growing movement with consultants and self-wedding planners popping up across the world in Canada. A service called Marry Yourself Vancouver <laughs> launched this past summer <laughs> offering consulting services and wedding photography. I have sex more with myself than my wife, so this is not such a bad thing. Uh, in Japan, a travel agency called Circa Travel offers two-day self-wedding package to Kyoto. You could choose a wedding down a bouquet and a hairstyle and pose for f- formal wedding portraits. On the website. What a sad wedding picture. Just you all by yourself. I, I could do that now. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> and you're going to pay for it? <laughs> On the website, I married me. You can buy a <laughs> DIY marriage kit for $50. You get a sterling silver ring. Can you imagine being at the ceremony? You got the ring. And then Thank you, you. You, you ask the person for the ring. And you forget, you forgot the ring. And you're searching for the ring. And the other person, the other person, the, you know, your other self, your other personality is going, where the hell's the ring? Yeah, you can marry yourself. <clears throat> well, yeah, and then you can go f yourself. If my, mo- if my mother's listening, she's planning the wedding right now. <laughs> I knew I'd get her married eventually. It's just unfortunately it's to herself. Yeah. And at your reception, you just take a piece of cake and just smash it into your yeah, own exactly, face. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So that's a, that's a uh, an interesting thing. Yeah, this that's whole. Um, I, I'm I'm fascinated by the the single um, <clears throat> the single uh, what, what you're going through. You're single. I, I'm not single. I haven't been single for a very long time. Uh, I'm curious about it, though, just because, um, you know, it's easy. I haven't had to go through it. And I I would imagine that things are incredibly. I've been married since 1998. Wow. So almost 20 years. And I am the last person because I left a F5 path of destruction behind me in my romantic life. I was a mover. I was a, you know. You could tell. I mean, look at me right now. You're guys like, in radio. Oh, you know, yeah. Let oh me just tell God. you something. Guys in radio, oh, the worst. they would use, especially if a guy worked on a, on a station and he, he was uh, on at night. Oh, oh trolling oh, the phone lines for oh, chicks. God. And then they'd always say, she sounded so good on the phone. <laughs> yeah, kind of like people think about you. You sound great on the air. And yes. they meet you and they go, what the hell? <clears throat> there used to be a thing, honestly, when I, when I was in radio, and you knew that if somebody's flirting with you on the phone. Right. They're not going to be attracted, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. But uh, but I, I I you know I okay. A, tell me how many times. Oh dear God, you have no idea. I don't even want to go there. It was very bad. And it then was, me, I would go out to remotes and stuff, and it was and guys always would come out. Oh, it was always the scariest one <clears throat> who would stand in front of me and just stare, you know, and just stare at me the whole time, or or come like really close <laughs> to the table and just stare. I had one here oh. that uh, for years. I mean, at least four or five years, and I kept saying, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. Well, why aren't you interested? Because you're creepy and you scare me. <laughs> For me, I'm going to tell you, this is a really weird story. <clears throat> Met a girl. She had approached me. This is before uh, Instagram, all this crap. This woman I met at a bar, I thought it was just an organic thing. It was a protest meeting. Yes. Well, I went I went on a date with her. Okay. We went on a date. Went on a date another time. Then I went to her place. Uh-huh. We did the deed. So she was a whore. She was a whore, of course. Okay. Of course. <laughs> Two dates and she's... Oh, oh eh, listen, listen. No, no, no it's, it's much better. Okay. Go to her house. We, you know, are intimate and all that. Uh-huh. Because she's a whore. I get up. Yes, yeah. thank you. You like you being able to say that on the... You know, <laughs> I can say whore now. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking whore. Okay. Um, but but I go into the kitchen to get a bottle of water or a drink of water, and I notice on her refrigerator she has a shrine erected to me with all of the newspaper articles about me as a radio personality. Oh. So I was a trophy for her. Um, so I... I went back in and I got my stuff and I walked. <laughs> but yeah, there was a shrine. Pictures that she had taken at events with a with a with a camera from a distance that she had taken and taped them on her fridge. So I she had a shrine erected and I was her trophy. Didn't stop me from, you know. No, I haven't sex with her, but Oh my god, she's psycho. Let me have sex with her first and I'll leave. She's kind of hot, but you know. Yeah. But, but no, really. That was that was kind of weird. Scary. It was kind of weird. Um was there a dead bunny in the in the? I swear to God, in the, the in the pan on the stove, it would have been close. 
But it is, uh, you, you, let's talk real quick about, and this is off the topic, it's so fun to talk about. You've been in radio a long time. Stalkers. Mm-hmm. Had several. I had a stalker. Um, she was a uh, a woman in Columbia, Missouri. And she was very endearing to me, and she would come and see me at events and stuff. And I realized that she was, there was something wrong, and I just kind of told her, listen, I really can't talk to you. This is weird. And she came out to an event of mine. Now, this is, by the way, she, before I told her to, to leave me alone, she had sent me a photo album of pictures that she'd taken of me with a telephoto lens at an event. She made an album. And it was all, all me. I didn't know I was being photographed. <clears throat> that's when I said, listen, you're really nice. But, uh, you know, she came out to an event <laughs> with a, uh, a squirt gun that looked like a, 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 a nine millimeter. <gasps> and she walked right up to me in my face and went, ch, 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 ch. Oh, and my squirted God. squirted water in my face. Squirted water in my face. And then walked away. Did you crap your pants? I pretty much, yeah. <laughs> But, but you know, you, was that it then? That was it. And she moved and she became a librarian in Arkansas or something. Thank God, because she was nuts. Have you had this? Is weird. Have you had anything like that happen to you? Have you have you had a stalker? Somebody? I, I, I've had a couple. I had uh, when I worked in Grand Rapids, Michigan, I was on a rock station and there was a guy well, that rock station. You never get stalkers at rock. Stations. No, not at all. <laughs> Oh, by the way, Diana's watching. Diana Acton Aaron Anderson, good friend of mine, Colleen. Hello. Is watching Rob Vota. Hello, Helen. Glad to have you guys on. We are having a meandering, but a, I think fascinating conversation. If you have a question or two you would like to, or if you're an ex stalker of uh, mine or uh, Darla Jay's, please send us a message. Go ahead, please. <laughs> um, I, I have one that I thought kind of was here okay. but i've i've had a couple over the years that would would come out and and just stare to at everything i did and you know i used to make jokes and stuff like that but there were a couple of times where it was incredibly uncomfortable and there was a couple of times where people then would follow me out to the parking lot oh, and then oh, where they were Lord. following me and uh. i didn't know what to do and since you know i'm i'm what am I now? 41? I was 26, yes, 30, 30, 40, 47. So far, um, yeah. I, I didn't have a cell phone then. <laughs> and so you're in your car and you know that somebody's following you. And I probably wasn't as careful as I should have been. Yeah. But yeah. now, you know, concealed carry has, has helped me a lot. Boom. <laughs> nice. But I, I can't imagine somebody coming up and putting what you thought was a gun. I mean, you probably thought that was it. Uh, yeah, I did. I, it scared the crap out of me. And she just went psh, 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 in my face and walked away. And she had this kind of greasy sheen on her face. She was nuts. Just nuts. I slept with her. I mean, I Of course you did. Obviously, she all the hot, stalkers, so. right. <laughs> me, I ran like crazy from all of them. Why won't you go out with me? Because I don't like you when you creep me out. Well, that, that's not a good enough reason. <laughs> we have, you know, it, it's funny because we have um, war stories. When you're in radio, you have war stories. Right. And uh, it is, it's fascinating to me. Because uh, I used to discount them when I heard them from other people, and then you're in the business long enough, and you are you and you have war stories that are uh, pretty pretty interesting, pretty interesting. So now, what is up next for you? We're going to wrap things up here pretty quickly because we have had a wonderful podcast. What's up for you um, in the in the in the future? I want to have you again on the show, maybe a you one, know I have to tell you once or ti- once or twice a week if you get time. You've had me more than any man has had me in a long time. <laughs> And for longer. Yeah. I lasted (laughs) an hour. I mean, come on. More than five minutes. Yeah, baby. (laughs) Come on. Uh, what's up for me next? Tomorrow I have a meeting with I um, could go another hour if you want to. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I've had enough. (laughs) Um (laughs) let's let's not blow our wad, so to speak, all in one day. That happened hours ago. Go ahead. I I have a meeting tomorrow with uh some people in Johnson County. Mm -hmm. Talk about Stuff. Stuff. All right. Um, I also am going to be working with a headhunter, and I'm also talking to, there's a one particular job I'm really interested in, but I have to convince them gotcha. that they really, really want me, and that has to all happen over the phone, gotcha. and that's a process. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Well, in the meantime... If you could, uh, I have a Patreon page, Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com, Rob Carson Show. If you can contribute to that, that would be greatly appreciated because I would love to make a go of this. Um, and you can do a dollar or $10 or $100 a month. And do whatever. it for me because if, if you help Rob, 
then I have a place to go do a show once in a well, while. And, and I'm going to say this again, Darla. Um, you have, this studio is yours. So if you want to do a studio with uh, a show with me or you, it's yours. Okay. I'm Thank not you. saying it's free. No. But no, no. But you know, you I brought you it. a box of wine. What do you want? Thank you very much. You bought a box of fries here. <laughs> no, but I, no, I really do. I mean that. You have the, you can use this studio. That's very kind. Um, uh, it, it's interesting. You were in, uh, in talk radio 11 years here. When I was let go in D.C., I built a home studio, and then I rebuilt it in several hours here. Uh, so for folks who've been in radio a long time and then you are just released by a company, um, it, it's, a, it's a, a, a genesis has to happen fairly quickly. It did for me. So you are welcome to use the studio for Thank voice you. work or whatever. And, and I really enjoy talking to you. And I think our listeners, uh, the folks who are checking it out tonight, whether it be Tyra, whether it be Diana or Barry or Colleen, or all of you folks, will you do me a favor? Will you share it with other folks? I'm told that to truly monetize a podcast, we need 100,000 people. That's big. <laughs> you know, that's big. We reached about 8,000 last week. And that was our first show. And that was the first show. If you would please share with others, uh, it would be greatly appreciated. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and I'm just going to say right now, um, you know, my family, we're, <laughs> you know, we moved here. Uh, and I worked one year and 10 months into a three-year deal and we're let go. And so right now we're just trying to pay the rent and stay in the house. That's what we need to do. So if you can help me pay the rent and stay in the house, I'm going to give you such a great product on a couple different websites, Rob Carson's show, Rob Carson's table, uh, audio and video podcast. I'm going to make it worth your while. I'm going to make it worth your while. And with you on here, you really make it worthwhile too. Thank so, you very much, Rob. Anyway, uh, guys, have a glorious evening. God bless you. It is time for us to sign off. So have a wonderful time. Write to Darla, uh, jdarla at gmail.com, uh, carsononthradio at gmail.com. Have a glorious evening, and we'll see you again another time.